Hi guys, Mrs. A here. Today we're looking at graphing reciprocals of functions. So we're specifically given a quadratic function here, but we could do the same process for finding, uh, for graphing the reciprocal of a linear function and it would work in the same way. So I'm going to do this using the chart method that we learned in class. So you see that I have the chart um, done for us here and we're just gonna fill this out. So to fill out our chart, we're going to do one column for the original function, that is the this quadratic equation, and then we're going to do the other column for the reciprocal function, which will be 1 over this equation. Uh, so to start us off, I already started um, off the question by graphing this parabola in the green. So you see here that I have the graph of our um, parabolic function graphed there, goes off the graph a little bit, but I have it graphed and that's just a guideline to help us with doing the sketch for the hyperbola that we're going to get from the reciprocal function. So you see that I graphed that knowing that this is a um, positive a value, so it's an open up parabola and I factored it to get the zeros of the function and when I got the zeros of this function they were x equals positive 2 and x equals negative 2 over 3. So we see that I have this. There's my negative 2 over 3 and there's my positive 2 for my two uh, zeros for that quadratic function. And knowing the properties of reciprocal functions then, the vertical asymptotes for the reciprocal function will be the same as where the zeros were. So we get x equals 2 and x equals negative 2 over 3 as the two asymptotes. So I'm going to go ahead and draw those asymptotes in right now before we forget. So it's always a good idea to do them right away. So here, the what was the zero on the original parabola will now become a vertical asymptote for the reciprocal quadratic that we're going to graph. So that's x equals 2. And then over here, that is x equals negative 2 over 3. Okay, so now we have our vertical asymptotes in. So let's continue here. Okay, I'm just going to now write the reciprocal that we're looking at. So here the reciprocal of that original quadratic would be this. And you should factor that quadratic. I had already done it, but if we factor it, we use decomposition on the denominator. And uh, when we factor it, we're going to get um, x minus 2 and 3, oh, pardon me, 3x plus 2 as the two factors. So that's where we got those zeros and then the vertical asymptotes for our new function. Okay, so now let's continue with the rest of our chart. So we're looking at the intervals where the graph is positive. So that means when is the graph above the x-axis? So if you look at the parabola that I graphed, you see that it is above the x-axis from negative infinity to negative 2 over 3, and then it's above the x-axis again from 2 to positive infinity. So those are the intervals on which the original parabola is positive. That means when it is above the x-axis. So we said 2 to infinity. And then the interval where the original graph is negative is when it's below the x-axis and that happens between negative 2 over 3 and positive 2. So that's the interval where it is negative. So knowing the characteristics of recipro reciprocal functions, these positive intervals are the same for both the original and the reciprocal and the same thing for the negative intervals. If it's negative or below the x-axis for the original function, the reciprocal will be the same. So we'll just copy these over because we know that these properties hold. So this means when I'm looking at the graph, 
here and when I plan to do my um, hyperbola on this grid, I know that to the left of the first vertical asymptote, I can expect my function to be above the x-axis. Uh, in between the two asymptotes, I can expect my function to be below the x-axis, and to the right of the other asymptote, I can expect it to be above the x-axis. So that's the uh, information that, make, that helps us to know exactly where the curves for our hyperbola are going to go. Let's look now at the intervals of increase and decrease. So we need to see when is the original function increasing and when it is decreasing. So again, let's look at the parabola. And I see that this parabola is decreasing as I move my pencil over it to the right all the way until the vertex. And then at the vertex, it changes and now the function is increasing. So I had found earlier that my uh, vertex for this parabola occurs when x is 2 over 3. Okay, and we do that by adding the two zeros together and dividing by 2. So we know from negative infinity to 2 over 3, the parabola is decreasing, and from 2 over 3 to positive infinity, the parabola is increasing. So let's fill in those intervals. So it's increasing, we said, from 2 over 3 to infinity, and it's decreasing from negative infinity to 2 over 3. So that vertex is the turning point, and that's going to distinguish uh, the change in decrease to increase for that parabola. Now for our reciprocal functions, it is the opposite for intervals of increase and decrease. So where the original function was increasing, the reciprocal function will decrease. And where the original function was decreasing, the reciprocal function will increase. So we just have to switch those over. The problem is, for the hyperbola, we do have to remember about the vertical asymptotes. So we can't include those in our intervals when we write them here. So we do have to write them split up. So when we do the interval of increase, it will have to match the interval of decrease from the parabola, but we do have an asymptote at negative 2 over 3. So when we do our interval of increase, we'll have to do from negative infinity to negative 2 over 3, because that was an asymptote, and then again from negative 2 over 3 to positive 2 over 3. So we're just taking out the negative 2 over 3 because that was a, a value of x where the function is undefined. Now we do the same thing. The interval of increase from the parabola will now become the interval of decrease for the hyperbola. So again, we have a vertical asymptote when x equals 2. So we do have to split this up as 2 over 3 to 2, and then again from 2 to positive infinity. So you see how I'm just excluding the value of 2 here in this interval. Okay, so the last thing that we need to find is the points when y equals 1 and when y equals negative 1. So if you look at the parabola, I see that my y is positive 1 uh, approximately here. Oh, sorry, that's negative 1. Let's do positive 1 here and positive 1 here. And then again, my y is negative 1 here and negative 1 approximately here. Those points serve as points of intersection between the original function and the new reciprocal function. So we can just use that sketch that I had already done. If you want to solve for the exact x values, then you would have to do a calculation that solves when y is 1 and you, here, if we move that 1 over, we end up with this equation that you need to solve for x. So you can't factor this. You'll need to use the quadratic formula. And when you uh, find your two x values using the quadratic formula, they're going to be um, 1, no, 2.1, and that and then a y value of 1, and the other x value will be negative 0 0.8 approximately, and 1. So these will match with our new reciprocal function here. So these points 
are on our uh, parabola here. There's 2.1 and 1, and there's negative 0.8 and 1. Then you do the same thing if you want to find the x values for when y equals negative 1. We do the same. We sub this in, bring the 1 over to get 0 on the one side, and this gives you a quadratic equation. You can't factor this, so you, again you use the quadratic formula to find your two x values. And when you do that calculation, your points are going to be 1.9 and 1, and negative 0.8, uh, sorry, 0.5, and negative 1. So we copy the points over here because they will match for the reciprocal function. Okay, so if we look at our parabola, uh, here is the 1.9 and negative 1, and here is the negative 0.5 and negative 1. So those match up. Okay, so the only thing left to do now is to draw our sketch for the hyperbola. So we know the if the parabola was decreasing here, it has to increase in this section. So there's our increasing curve. And then again over here, the parabola was increasing, so now it needs to decrease and cross through that point that we had at positive 1. So it will look something like this. And then underneath of the x-axis between the two vertical asymptotes, um, this, these two points we have to cross through, and the parabola is decreasing until the 2 over 3 mark, and then increasing after the 2 over 3 mark, so we want to do the opposite. It's going to increase, and then once we get to the 2 over 3 mark, we're going to decrease. So there's an approximate sketch, the blue, for the reciprocal to that quadratic function that we were given here. So this is how they compare. The green would be the quadratic, and then the blue is our new a reciprocal function, which is a hyperbola. Thanks for watching. Mrs. A loves math.